Did everyone have coffee today? Yes. 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 No. How much coffee did you have? Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> I think I had enough as well. I'm going to drink my water. Um, the first thing I want to say before I really do anything, I'm not here for your temporary happiness today. I'm here for your eternal joy. All right. One of the biggest things to me is something that is overflowing. Something that's not a quarter or half full. All right. I want you guys to leave here overfilled, relentlessly overpouring out of here. I don't want you to feel like this is just another sugar-coated sermon. Mm -hmm. So, today I'm going to talk about our Instagram-related church. So one of the biggest things that I talked about before I even started was talking about how sometimes we have coffee and we fill ourselves up with this temporary satisfaction of something that caffeinates us but doesn't really fully fill us up to something where we're fully excited for the rest of the day. All right. Mm -hmm. One of the things I realized was when we drink coffee, there's always a crash. Mm -hmm. It's not eternal, it's not overflowing, it's not keeping you awake for the rest of the week. It's only something that starts for just a moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, before we even begin, what do you want to change your life that's eternal and forever? Mm -hmm. Not something that's just temporary. Mm -hmm. So let me start with prayer, and I'm going to let the Holy Spirit guide us. I have notes. There's an order to it, but the Holy Spirit tends to direct me in a different way. Amen. All right. God, thank you for this morning and this afternoon. Thank you for the direction of the preachers and the teachers and how we are going to be able to change the direction in the course of history by the word of you. Yes. God, use me. Yes. yes. Allow me to only use your voice and not mine. I'm yes. asking for conviction to speak through you and not through myself and the words that I have personally. I don't want to lay out my own personal opinion or my personal agenda. I want you to speak. Yes. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the moment just to be allowed to even have a moment to be in front of this group of people. Everybody has their own voice. Yes. God, I ask if you can speak through each of them. Yes. So through this sermon, I ask that we actually use action through our words, but not through ourselves, but through you. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to start with the spoken word. So it'll be about maybe 15 seconds, but before I get into that, does anyone know the song or can sing the song by Todd Delaney? Your great name? Anyone know that song? Mm -hmm. All right. I might call one of you. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know that song, I might even just use the, word, uh, the song Amazing Grace at the end. Yeah. So if you all know that, we might just resonate in that song, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Change. Six letters so profound and radical. It can define us, yet we become so skeptical, trying to define it to be impractical. But why do we, many of us preach and teach it's impossible when Webster's Dictionary tells us it's definable? Mm -hmm. Change. And if it still screams problematical, then let me share how it's not so replaceable. This is change. Mm -hmm. The mentality to actively and constantly better you and me, this is change. Mm -hmm. Let me rewind and dust the book from the shelf to see we want to change the world, but we need to start with ourselves. Um, yeah. good. The theme for this conference is the gospel in the city. And I cannot but help but ask myself, what does this mean for me, for you? And for everybody around that hasn't heard the gospel of Jesus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what changes are we in for as a country so that we can take the gospel to every nation? How many of us want change in the society, not only in America, but in the world? All right. Yet why is it for some reason the 21st century church is looking more like Twitter followers instead of a hashtag leader? Mm. Okay. Great, man. Today I want you to know I did not come to sugarcoat the word of God so that we may stay complacent in our faith this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I did not come to speak surface level, so let's set the stage as we read Matthew 28. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him. 
but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. Just need to stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. That's all right. But one of the biggest things that I've noticed was, we even start with verse 16 when it says, But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. Mm -hmm. we, we forget to say there were twelve, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So eleven were completely committed to Jesus. Mm -hmm. In the sense of proceeding to Galilee, out of the eleven that were completely committed to Jesus, during the Passover when he discussed that he was going to be in Galilee, before he cru was crucified, eleven committed themselves to make sure they were there after. They made sure that they were committed to make that distance, to make themselves to Galilee to see Jesus. All right. Mm -hmm. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. At this time, people were still skeptical and talking about Jesus and how he was missing from the tomb. And people were trying to basically come up. The religious leaders were coming up with this decision to talk to the guards. They were saying, hey, if you just lie about it and say the disciples stole Jesus. But the fact is, the disciples were on their way to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when they finally seen him, yes, some were skeptical, but when they finally seen him and he said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. He didn't say, hesitate, and make disciples of all the nations. He said, go. Mm -hmm. What I've learned about the word go, it means that you have to leave something yeah. to right. do something. Mm -hmm. right. You cannot right. stop amidst the way. You cannot stop and look around and say, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, go and make disciples. He didn't say, go and stop at a church and start questioning whether I should be here or not. He said, go and make disciples. All right. mm -hmm. He didn't say that you had to be at a specific denomination. Mm -hmm. He said, go and make disciples. Mm -hmm. So my question is, what are you doing in church to make disciples? Are All you right. questioning the very preacher that is talking about the word of God? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to make disciples within the church that you are existing in? Mm -hmm. All right. Are you going to talk about the racism that is existing? Or are you going to talk about community and fellowship mm -hmm. that should exist? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. That's one of my questions, is how are we going to change society so that we're not looking as if we're just an individual, mm -hmm. but a community mm -hmm. for All the right. word of God? Yeah. All right. So moving forward, my question for the church today is how can we share the gospel to the world if we don't really know the gospel ourselves? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we know it, are we living it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we explain the word gospel, it is defined as the teaching and revelation of Christ. Mm -hmm. It can also be defined as a set of principles or beliefs, or a thing that is absolutely true. You see, I believe in God as much as I physically see this chair in front of me. I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ is absolutely true. Yet having a gospel we believe in does not change the world if we do not have men and women living the gospel. All right. So as of right now, I'm just taking a second to look at this globe. What do you see? Is black and white. Yet whenever I listen to the Holy Spirit and I think of the world that we live in, I see color. Yeah. I see an existing co- uh, God, thank you so much. Yes, God. Thank you so much for this right. existence that we are cohabitating in this world, not just of one color, mm -hmm. but many. We are not just one nation mm. of America. Mm. We're not one nation of Africa. We're not one nation of Asia. We're not one nation of Europe. All right. We're a global nation under God. Mm -hmm. And so when I see this globe, I don't see black and white. I see color. Because I'm listening to what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm listening to what God is telling me. There's not just a world. There are people in this world. That's not just one perspective, but many perspectives. When we look around this room, we see multiple colors. We see multiple ethnicities and cultures, people from different backgrounds and people from different experiences, people from different traumas and people from different relationships. What I've noticed is we need to stop looking at somebody with a skepticism and an idea of who they are. We need to relate right. to them and understand that yeah. they have a story right. and we need to listen right. before we can even verbally understand who they are. Yes, yes, yes. 
There are known to be over 40 English translations of the Bible with over 2,000 languages. And no matter your take or perspective of the Bible, the consistency still stands. Mm -hmm. Great. Making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, right. Too many of us are getting caught up on which version of the Bible is true rather than preaching the consistency and validity of the Gospel. Mm -hmm. That's good. After knowing and understanding the Gospel from and beyond Matthew 28, here are three obstacles that we are keeping that are keeping us away from our global impact as a church. One, individually changing. We have to individually change before we can globally impact something. Mm -hmm. Reading the Bible. How many of us open the Bible on a daily occasion? All right. Prayer. All right. Do we even relationally talk to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Relationship and a daily devotional with Jesus. Do we even have any application to what we are reading and praying and worshiping about? And then allowing the move of the Holy Spirit to transform our ways to parallel His way. Yes. Number two, we are fighting our own resources. We need to change some of our old resources mm -hmm. for the new. How many of you have a phone this morning? Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. An iPhone and an Android. Mm -hmm. yes, Hopefully sir. it's TSA approved. <laughs> if you can, wave your phone for me. All right. Amen. What I've noticed is we all have a resource and yet we don't use them. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. What's the purpose of preaching if we don't actually have an applicable ability to go beyond the stage and go out in front and actually use the resources that are not just spiritual but material? Right. We can use a material thing for God's purpose yeah. because God created it. All right. So I'm talking about having a phone, I'm talking about social media and the traditional perspectives. Stop looking at it as a negative aspect of your life. Stop deactivating Facebook. Because once you deactivate Facebook, somebody else is reaching out asking for help. Somebody else is becoming suicidal. We have over a million suicide attempts yearly. That's right. And for some reason, we decided to deactivate Facebook instead of acting onto these issues and talking about the situations. Start helping other people. Social media is critical and essential to the church. Mm -hmm. We used to start with radio to television, Christian radio, Christian TV. We used to be at pews, now to chairs. Mm -hmm. When water became healthier to drink, more people uh -huh. lived. Mm -hmm. We talk about now social media, Facebook and Twitter. One of the things that I've noticed with moving on into this generation is we don't need to post and tweet everything about Jesus, but Jesus should be able to read every post and tweet mm. that we have. Mm. One of the things we're noticing is a lot of people want to talk about partying, and I get it, but what if somebody's struggling with alcoholism? Mm -hmm. What if somebody's struggling with suicide and we're continuing to blast people on Facebook? We All don't right. know the actual context in which they are posting about. All right. Mm -hmm. Instagram. If Instagram shows a scripted image of who we are as individuals, then Instagram as a church may be just scripted, only showing a fake image of who they really are. For example, if a church is only giving money of a charitable organization without action, what is occurring? What really is happening? If we are giving money without actually understanding the pursuit in which the action that they take, how are they changing the world? And finally, we need to change our church's reactions into actions. My motive is to let others taste and see that Jesus is good, wow. not by how many people I gain in a single service, but by the truth that I preach. Mm -hmm. This tells me in the Bible that it has already given us a mission, and this mission cannot be altered by our own agendas. How many churches are closing because they are reaching their own global agenda and throwing away God's local mission? Mm -hmm. So in Winston-Salem, what are we doing today to actually act and not react to all of the issues, the gentrification, the ideas in the city, in the downtown area? What are we doing to actually put action mm -hmm. instead of reacting to all the issues? Mm -hmm. There needs to be something to where we move mm -hmm. instead of just verbally post on Facebook. Mm -hmm. all right. Thank you, guys. Amen.